Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory. We honor you. We magnify your name. We honor you for the privilege of coming into your presence. You have kicked off this conference, and we are humbled by the things you have started doing. And we are sure that we are set on eagle wings to fly. And so this morning we come humbling ourselves and submitting to you, Holy Spirit. Take over. Manifest the glory of the risen Christ in a new dimension this morning. That everyone that has come in here will have their questions answered. Their doubts changed to faith. And their lives transformed to the next level. So that as we are living here this morning... There will be evidences of having met with the Lord. That we go out there to showcase the glory of the risen Christ and manifest the power that has resurrected Christ from the, from the dead. And so take over, Lord, and let the name of the Lord your Lord be glorified. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' most wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Is somebody glad to be here this morning? Can I put our hands together for the Lord? Give the Lord a shout! Hallelujah! Please have a welcome, the anointed, sing your name. Hallelujah! Yeah. You come with your praise this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come and put those hands together and give Jesus praise. We've come to sing to you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah! Don't stop clapping, don't stop clapping. Put those hands together Woo. like this.
lift up your voice and begin to worship him with the fruit of your lips. He is Onishayanu, the beginning and the end, the glory and the lifter of our heads. Come and worship. Father, we give you all the glory. I am a Lift up your voice and worship. Lift up your voice and worship. Let him hear you worship him this morning. Come on. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Say oh.
assignment is twofold. First of all, I just want to lead us in receiving our offerings and our givings this morning so that we can give our preacher enough time to exhaust this morning before we return in the evening. Hallelujah. Media, would you help me with Luke chapter 21? This will guide our giving this morning. You know, I went back to look at that scripture Luke chapter 21 verse 1 to 3 says where there was an offering being collected he said and he looked up and he saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury continue he said he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites and he said without doubt he said, of a truth, I say unto you that this poor widow has cast more than they all. So I kept wondering, how did he know what the other people cast? <laughs> he said, I saw the rich until I found out that this morning's offering must be a reflection of the state of your heart. So it was not just in the volume of what the woman gave that made the impression on the master. It was about what was commensurate to the state of her heart. He said, surely this woman has given something 
that has resonated with the state of our heart. And this morning, I just want us to put this at the back of our mind as we bring in our offerings and our givings this morning. Please, this morning, do not just give out of ceremony. But I want you to give an offering that will resonate with heaven. And that we have already learned that it proceeds out of the abundance of the heart. In other words, what you give this morning will be vetted by the not just the amount that you give, but the attitude thereof. Hallelujah. And I want you to give abundantly this morning. And commemorate because we have it, do have a lot of expense to deal with over the course of the conference. Um, so I want you to give in abundance. But please do not give what is beneath the ma magnitude of what your heart wants to give out. Hallelujah. Because of the one that you give for, if he needed money, he would not ask you. But he seeks occasion that you may be blessed. Hallelujah. So if you're making out transfers, please let the um, um, numbers on the screen be your guide this morning. Those of us watching online or wherever, please do use the numbers for transfers. If you still need an envelope, please do raise your hands. I'm sure an usher would gladly put one in your hands. Hallelujah. If you're writing out checks this morning, please do make them payable to House on the Rock Enugu. If you have put together that offering that resonates with that which you expect the Lord to do and as are continually done, please do rise on your feet as we bring our offerings our tight. This morning is a very good time to redeem a pledge, redeem a vow, something you had told God that in the course of this conference you are going to lay this down upon the altar. Would you lift up those offerings above your head? Whether you made a transfer, just lift up a card or your phone as a mark of honor. And just begin to declare a word. Hallelujah. You see, we have been trained to not come to God and give casually. The Bible says that he was the one that is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Far above all that we can ask or imagine. So this morning, our king, as we raise up these offerings, these fights, these vows, these pledges. We ask our king that it will come to you as sweet smelling several. Let it not just be a physical mark upon the earth. Let it have spiritual significance in the heavens. Such that in the day of trouble, the Bible says truly we can call on our God and he will answer. I say I will cause men to give back to you pressed down, shaking together and running over. May you never be less because you gave to God. Hallelujah. May you go out abundantly blessed sufficiently enough to do all good works father we thank you we ask that you will receive this that you will have respect not just to the seed but to the giver and that honor and glory will be ascribed unto your name we thank you our king in jesus name we pray i said in jesus name we pray come on say a better amen this morning hallelujah if you're standing by the end of the aisles, please do keep standing. The rest of us can transit our envelopes or our givings down the aisle, either to the left or to the right. Please do sit if you are not at the end of the aisle. Just pass your offerings to the person standing on the left or on the right. If you're standing, please do hold on to the envelopes until an usher gets to you to receive them. Hallelujah. To take us further this morning in this conference, so 2023, I'd just like to introduce someone who is really no stranger to not just this house, but to the city of Enugu. Personally, I came in contact with this man way back. I remember I was still in university. I think I was in my fourth or third year when I met with this person. And I can tell you that in the journey of life, as you proceed towards destiny, Every time you come into contact with men, God is about to move you forward. The Bible says that God said unto them, I have heard the cry of my people. I will surely go down and deliver them. But when he came, it was a man called Moses that showed up. Hallelujah. Praise God. And over 23 years, I have watched, I have learned, I have studied. And there's one thing I can tell you. 
to this man nothing is impossible you know before i met him i used to think there are certain things you can just leave and go uh not with this one he will tell you no see if it is not if if it if it was not able we were not able to do it god would not put it in our heart hallelujah and for over 23 years he has been pastor he has been shepherd he has been mentor he has been teacher he has been boss he has been counselor he has been role model hallelujah he does not just oversee the house on the rock in Ubu. he is the regional director of all house on the rock in southeast nigeria please help me welcome this morning the convener of the SOAR conference 2023 the right reverend dr edwin Bayebo. welcome brother. if you are ready to soar can you give god a beautiful do i have anyone who is ready to soar this morning come on i said do i have anyone who is willing to soar this morning now come on let's give the king of kings and the lord of lords a big shout let's give him praise let's give him glory in the house hallelujah how many of you were truly impacted last night oh my god now let's just let's just lift up our hands and once again just wave it to the king of kings and say thank you thank you thank you for that word thank you for that visitation thank you for taking us to the theater thank you for the surgical operation thank you for the change thank you for taking away rubbish from our lives thank you for bringing us into the place where it will be fitting for you to use us for your purposes lord we are grateful hallelujah once again house on the rock enugu city let's put our hands together and celebrate him this morning today is day two one is the number of god the lord our god is one god two is the number of agreement if the two of you shall agree concerning anything they shall ask it shall be done in heaven this morning i want to declare that as we all come together in agreement with the counsel of god that is about to come your destiny your life your business your ministry will never remain the same in the mighty name of jesus once again put those hands together and you may take your seat hallelujah would like to go straight to business this morning because we realize that it's a morning session it's a teaching session i'm going to leave out a lot of compliments and a lot of protocol until the evening session but i want to welcome every single men and women of god from across the city who have taken our time out of their busy ministry schedules to worship with us this morning and to be a part of SOA conference. Please, if you don't mind, let all the men of God just stand up as we just appreciate every one of them. Thank you from all over the city. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate every one of you. We want to say thank you for making it in Jesus' name. We also have some of our branch pastors from House on the Rock across the eastern part of the country. Pastor Bride from Abakaliki, Pastor JP or Joel Peters. Please help me acknowledge him from Newi and Pastor Annie Ikebudu all the way from the city of Abba. Thank you, man of God. We love and appreciate every single one of you. Thank you once again. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, one scripture, and we're going to go straight to the business of the day. Proverbs, sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10, 15. Can I have it on the screen? Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15. It says, the labor of the foolish weary yet every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city life can be wearisome life can be wearying if you know what god wants you to do the only problem is you don't know how to go about doing it this morning is not a meeting for crowd this morning is a meeting for men, women, business with their destinies. We've come together as men who lead organizations, men who lead ministries and churches, men who lead communities and people groups politically and so on and so forth. We've come to receive wisdom, tools, instruction on how we can take it from the point of walking, from the point of running to the point where we can indeed soar. We've come to build capacity, we've come to build effectiveness will come that the lord might impact us i want to beg you this morning 
I know you're going to get phone calls from your office. You're going to get phone calls from your shop. You're going to get phone calls from your ministry saying, there's a problem here, yeah, there's a problem there. I want to remind you that problem need to finish. And after this conference, you're not going to finish. So take your phone, put it on silence. Just shut down all the distractions. Send a text message to your wife or your husband. Tell her that in the next two hours, please, any emergency should be suspended until I'm out of this place. Because I believe that God wants to do something that your destiny will never recover from in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening by 4 p.m., don't forget we do have the miracle service and it's Apostle's last session with us. And you don't want to miss it for any reason. Don't forget to invite friends, family, and everyone that indeed you want to be blessed by the meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored and privileged as a city to have this man. There are nations and continents who will give anything. They will sacrifice their presidential jets. They will sacrifice everything just to have him put his foot on their soil. And we are privileged as a little small city called Enugu to have him pass through the city at least twice in a year. He was here not too long ago. I was there physically and now he's here again. I'm going to ask you to please join me this morning to rise on your feet as we honor and celebrate a man that God has chosen, anointed for such a time as this. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the president of Eternity Network and Koinonia. Would you please, with Jesus welcome and a special Enugu welcome, receive Apostle Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Um, let me just just ride from where um, Reverend Edwin stopped. I really want to salute everyone for making the sacrifice to be here. This is one of the prize that it takes to rise. There's no convenience as far as rising is concerned. Hallelujah. The Bible says to labor so that we enter that rest. It says there remaineth a rest for the people of God. This is a leadership session, and I trust that God will truly grant us wisdom. I was so inspired by that scripture, even though I've read it so many times. It is true that the labor of the foolish, the foolish there not being an insult, is a description of a kind of person. Hallelujah. There is a kind of person who is called foolish. He may be sincere, but he's still foolish. And what makes a person foolish is the absence of the knowledge on how to get to the city he said he knoweth not how to get to the city and it is dangerous if such a man is not going alone because every other person going with him he will recycle and reproduce his pain and his ignorance in their lives so this is a proper deliverance service where god himself is going to be helping us to part ways once and for all with certain things that have limited us limited the purposes of God in our lives perhaps our organizations um, so I will request that we take is it all right if we take 10 minutes to pray do you believe in prayer we're going to pray seriously in the spirit asking him to impart upon us the grace it takes to be distinguished in our lives please say after me father one more time say father this morning, I obtain grace to soar in the spirit. I obtain grace to understand everything you have to say. Go ahead and pray. Aparus Paranda Barato Sevreke de Belegadash Shabarakosa da Barato Sege de Belegados. You are praying in the spirit. Shabalada Bakata Branda Gebrekosa Braske Beledesh Sada Balakata Varada Gabarus Helabas Kebraske Balado Katafadege de Belegadabus. We obtain grace. We obtain grace. This morning we obtain grace. We obtain grace. 
Ebaka baraka to sabra da balako siya barandas. We obtain grace. Ate baraka to shavra skavala katos. Hamrata baraka to shavra gede beleke brasmen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we are still praying. An excelling life is every believer's heritage in Christ. An excelling life, a life of glory, beauty, color, and excellence is every believer's destiny in Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 2, a scripture that has inspired me so greatly. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day. Watch this, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above how many regardless your current location he says he will set you above all the nations of the earth this was not a parable this was not just a statement with a prophetic meaning it literally meant what he said above all the nations of the earth then he says in verse 2 that all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you you're going to pray Lord, what my eyes need to see this morning to soar into the next level, the next height, the next altitude in the spirit. Open my ears and open my eyes. There is something your ear needs to hear. There is something your eyes needs to see like Habakkuk. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. You may not need to hear everything. You may not need to see everything. But that which I must see and that which I must hear as far as the next level of my prophetic destiny is concerned, reveal to me. Go ahead and pray. Wash my eyes with al -sab, with high self that I may see. Let my ears hear the sounds of the Spirit with clarity and precision. hallelujah hallelujah final prayer and then we'll be seated the bible says they heard the word just like we did it says but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it faith in one word is obedience and obedience is a product of understanding you cannot be obedient in confusion the first law of obedience is clarity of understanding if you do not understand my instruction you cannot obey it doesn't mean you're a rebel it just means you are confused hallelujah are we learning this is very important it's one thing to hear prophetic words no matter how powerful they come but you must obtain grace to obey obtain grace to walk in keeping when peter looked at him and he says if it be thou bid me come he never said peter come he just said come whoever everyone was available to obey that instruction and get the same result had he called peter any other person who stepped out would be in disobedience because he specified like lazarus if he said come out resurrection would happen immediately because everybody dead will rise so he selected one person and said lazarus come out but in this case if it be thou bid me come he said come everyone had a chance to experience the privilege of walking on water but only one person took the step it's not the person who hears that gets the results 
is the person who takes that step father the grace the grace to act in keeping with the things i hear i receive this morning go ahead and pray go ahead and pray the grace the grace That as my direction comes as the instruction for the next level of ministry comes the next level of business the next level of influence in the spirit i obtain grace not just to hear not just to celebrate not just to be excited but to act in keeping hallelujah for in jesus name we are praying Lord, we obtain grace this morning and we lean upon the help, the strength and the wisdom of the Spirit. We pray that you will help us in Jesus' name. Please be seated. The God we serve is a mighty God. The God that we serve is a mighty God and He desires that His people become a reflection of His might, His power, his wisdom and his excellence hallelujah it is often said that a lion would not give birth to a sheep or some animal of lesser quality everything delivers after its kind and if it is true that we have been grafted into Christ through salvation it then means that eventually our lives should be a clear reflection of everything that God is hallelujah if it is true that he's mighty then might should be captured in your life if he's the all-wise god then wisdom superior wisdom should be captured in your life do you believe that yeah if the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to the lord then eventually your life should be a reflection of the supplies of heaven hallelujah yeah if all power and authority belongs to him then dominion should be something, a reality that your life should demonstrate here and now. But the Bible says, they know not, neither will they understand. Psalm 82 and verse 5. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some of you, are children of the Most High. 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes i forbid this for your life Amen. that as a result of this morning's meeting and of course this conference that it will not just be a theme of a conference it will become the description of your next level that everybody who sees you indeed they will glorify god for you they will see the difference between the former you and the now current you and the difference will be striking it will be clear that the hand of god rested upon your life do you believe this yes the purpose of meetings like this is not just to whet our appetite and to introduce us to possibilities that exist knowing what should be and not stepping into it will frustrate you more than ignorance it's better to not even know that those possibilities exist than to know them and then not have the grace to step into it hallelujah imagine that i come into a house if i'm not aware that there's there's a delicious meal in the kitchen you see there's no temptation and frustration might not affect me because i'm not even aware but imagine that you lead me to the kitchen and show me everything there then you say go back and sit you will not get my attention again am i right yeah because you have created an expectation and then my appetite will not rest until I have a chance to taste of what you have prepared. So when God prepares this feast of fat things, it is not just to whet your appetite and frustrate you. He's showing you that this can be your reality if you make up your mind to. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that Babu wani kamaruka 
I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that Let me tell you how this song came. A few years ago, I was in Cameroon and I went to preach for a conference and I just woke up as I would do in the morning. I was just worshiping and reflecting on my own life. I broke into tears and I said, look at my life. Look what the God of heaven can do with a man who chooses to believe him. And this song came out of that contemplation. I began to reflect on my former self and my now self. What God would do in someone's life, whether you're a musician or not, it will lead you to writing a song that will guide nations to attest to the fact that he has lifted you, that he has blessed you, that he has exalted you in the name of Jesus Christ. God lifts, oh. God lifts. God can honor a man. God can turn your life around, turn your ministry around, turn your organization. Is it not in your Bible that he has turned my morning into dancing? Have you stopped reading that scripture? That he has turned my sorrow into joy. This God, God can anoint men. God can separate men. God can distinguish men. God can place his hand upon a man and it becomes clear that God's hand is upon you. God can tell the nations to listen to you and no power in existence can stop your voice from being heard. It is true. God can even restore that a man can lose everything, money, reputation, and my God can choose to restore. He can even resurrect. Hallelujah. It's important that when we're gathered like this, we understand that we're gathered onto a God that can do all this and more. This already will stretch your faith to believe him so that we don't come with our limitations. Apostle, I'm owing right now as I'm sitting my mind. You see, the reason why people get distracted in church is because of unbelief. They have not come into a comprehension of the person they have come to encounter. Hallelujah. When a very wealthy man comes here and says, lend me your attention, I want to assure you that you will not live the same. You suspect that he may bless you at the end of it. So no matter what tries to distract you, you see it as an attack. You give him your rapt attention because of the awareness of what he can do. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babuani Kamara. Babuani Kamara. Yeah, yes. Babu wani kamar ka Ya Yesu Babu wani kamar ka That anyone who says you will not rise that anyone who says your ministry, your vision will not rise. That anyone who says you must look like where you are coming from. In the name of Jesus by this meeting this morning. I stand by the apostolic and the prophetic. I declare may those altars be crushed forever. May those voices be silenced forever. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Please be seated. My spirit was just fired up as I came here and I just, I just thought to bring this to challenge someone. Shake off that limitation. It's time to soar. Hallelujah. Do you know why the plane lifts? It lifts because it, if it keeps moving at that pace, it will start bouncing. The speed is too much for land, so it has to lift. Hallelujah. That when it begins to taxi to lift, 
there is a speed requirement that no object on land should continue it it will it will have to change faces hallelujah just like temperature when you put ice and you set maybe you put ice in a pot and set it on fire there is a temperature that cannot allow it to be ice again there is a temperature that cannot allow it to be liquid again is that true yes same water but existing in different phases the difference is the temperature and in this case for a plane and aircraft the difference is the speed that there is a speed that becomes unfair for it to remain on the ground and that way it soars because that's where it belongs at that speed hallelujah some of you after this conference you will stand before kings and nobles it listen you will look left and right and find out that you it's almost like it's a dream you will ask yourself what am i doing here who would have believed that god will lift me that all those who knew you will say how did you get here how did god pick you from enugu to place you to sit with kings i'm saying this as a prophetic word maybe not for everyone but for someone who has the grace to believe that my God can lift men, may that grace rest upon you this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated. Hallelujah. A journey of 12 to 13 hours can be covered in 50 minutes depending on what carries you there hallelujah so it is possible to leave me in lagos on my bed sleeping and by the time you get to abuja i'm still sleeping there and you are wondering what happened i simply had the advantage of a more superior means of transportation am i right on that yes that a journey that should take 10 12 13 hours I can take that journey in 50 minutes not because I am better than the person who went by road or any other means I simply had the leverage of a more superior system of transportation this is what is happening to you this morning that the things you are about to hear just imagine yourself coming out of another kind of means of transport into a more superior one that what you are hearing in a matter of days some of you it will so revolutionize your life in the name of jesus christ listen we rise upon the strength of the information and the revelation we have access to we do not rise just because of desire it takes more than desire to rise hallelujah the wealth of the revelation you have is what constructs your means of transportation in destiny the wealth of the revelation the abundance of the lights that you have uh, the, the light you have is what you will use to construct your means of transportation if you do not have superior light you may be forced to crawl through destiny when God wants to help you he sends you light the light only comes through men so it looks like he's sending you a man but a man is only useful because of the light are we together now I've had the honor and the privilege of studying very successful ministries, successful organizations, successful believers. And when I say successful people whose lives have been a very clear representation of God's intent. There are others who have given flimsy excuses as to why their spiritual lives, their finances, their organizations and their destinies have failed to rise to her prophetic potential. You see, every time you find yourself in a limitation, there are two ways you can approach that situation. One, to give a flimsy religious excuse to console yourself and crystallize your mediocrity or take responsibility and say, I know there is a way. I may not know the way, but I will not rest till I find it. Our world is full of many believers, including Christians, who knowing that they have been limited in many, in many areas, 
would not take responsibility so if the man's prayer life is down he would downplay prayer and say prayer is not important as an excuse to remain in that state if the man's word study life is not robust and serious he will say it's not about revelation we we are masters at creating excuses in areas where we do not excel if the man's finances is going down he says it's all about love for jesus and not about money what does that mean are we together if we fail to rise we say after all we are all going to die all these wise sayings that endorse mediocrity shake that thing off your destiny this morning in the name of jesus and brace yourself that everything god has in store for me my life will be a clear representation of all that jesus died for my life will be a clear representation of the victory that is captured in the death burial resurrection ascension and exaltation of the king and that if my life is short of any of this then it becomes my press to see that within my lifetime i become as clear as possible a representation of his power hallelujah this is responsible christianity if you are broke don't argue don't complain just come to god and say i take responsibility there is something i have not seen show me the light if your spiritual life is going down don't give a flimsy excuse and say after all the most important thing is that i'm saved no i can step into a higher level if your organization is failing and you're not contending for true kingdom influence don't downplay influence because it is not captured in your life are we together so this morning i want to share with us a few things as we pray that I thought would really help us. It's my honor to contribute as God will grant grace to our rising and excelling. Sir, I made a commitment and a covenant with God that in my life as a leader and as a man of God, that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. It is my intent to raise people who become a holistic representation of everything that Jesus died for. That includes spiritual vibrancy a transformed people a people who excel in every area of their life and so in teaching and mentoring my people I am very intentional I'm very methodical and I'm very insistent when I teach on finances you will think that is all that I know when I teach on consecration and spiritual life you will think I would not teach on anything else it is my desire to see that God's people be holistically built it is dangerous to be lopsided in your construction because you will be the only representation of Jesus that someone may be looking at and if you are not thoroughly built you will misrepresent who Jesus is a few weeks ago I taught back home trying to help us redefine that there is a kind of Jesus we are selling to the nations that a whole generation is going to reject because that portrait of Jesus is not the one the Bible talks about we have sold a weak Jesus a limited Jesus a Jesus who is not interested in letting men rise to positions of influence and nobility to live lives of dignity and honor this wrong misguided narrative is what has plunged Africa as our continent and this nation where it is so you find some of the failing businesses they belong to Christians and we excuse it and say after all we are soon going to go home and so it endorses carelessness mediocrity and so on and so forth but this morning I hope to challenge us in the name of Jesus that there is a destiny for us in Christ and God desires he did not waste these resources in our lives the Word of God the blood of Jesus the Holy Spirit God would not have granted us access to these rich resources just to live a mediocre life and when I talk about an excelling life it's important that I let you know that everything I talk about is with respect to God's expectation with respect to the revelation of Jesus in and through your life hallelujah everything in your life only finds its value to the degree to which it contributes to making Jesus known to your world it's important that we have that at the back of our minds praise the name of the Lord second Chronicles chapter 
15 second chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3 i like us to read this scripture as loud as we can when it is projected ready one to read please now for a long season israel had been without the true god and without a teaching priest and without law one more time please now for a long season israel had been without a true god uh-huh ladies and gentlemen in this simple verse of scripture lies the secret to territorial decadence that every time satan wants to destroy a territory there are three things he withdraws number one the knowledge of the one true god number two he withdraws leadership teaching priests no one to guide no one to mentor no one to instruct and number three he removes laws show me a society that does not acknowledge god as their king did the bible not say blessed is the nation whose god is the lord hallelujah it says now for a long time this tragedy unfortunately happened to the nation of israel israel had been without the true god and you know jesus said this in john 17 remember and verse 3 this is life eternal that they may know ye you the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent so back to that scripture for a long time israel was without the true god number two without a teaching priest a teaching priest what is the assignment of the teaching priest jeremiah 3 15 and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding so that any territory that is bankrupt of a teaching priest men and women commissioned mandated by god to help guide the understanding of his people within that territory and then number three the absence of laws people just do whatever they want to do no boundaries no limits did the bible not say a man who does not have a watch a gate over his spirit is like a city without walls any business any church any territory that experiences these threefold deficiencies will always remain a prey to satan the absence of the one true god the absence of teaching priests the absence of laws this is true for churches this is true for individuals this is true for corporate organizations hallelujah praise the name of the lord this is very important now most people desire to rise most companies most churches desire to rise and excel and if you ask the average person what is the key to a victorious christian life as an individual as a ministry they will tell you things like faith for some others will tell you light understanding others will say anointing are we together others will say just make sure you crush all the altars that are so pieces of truth together but did you know that for you to make progress in the spirit the first thing you need to understand is how God designed his kingdom to function you cannot be in a kingdom and not consult with the owner of the kingdom how did God design the kingdom to function how did God design victory to be administered and experienced are we together the only person who has the exclusive right to guide your excelling is God himself he designed the system he was not given he is Alpha Omega it is pride to try to design a great life and ignore the one him the one who brought the whole thing about most people try to build ministries through all kinds of formulas build businesses through all kinds of formulas and did you know that while they are doing all that god is by the side watching them and they ignore him or at best involve him when there is trouble and when there is a semblance of peace they say you can leave now the day i need you you will come back again 
but see what the bible says in the beginning god created he never said in the beginning god and man created in the beginning god alone exclusively that means for everything i desire to become obtain achieve everything i desire i must go back and consult god how did you design for men to prosper in the kingdom how did you design for territories to advance in the kingdom how did you design for individuals to be anointed in the kingdom how did you design for people to access wisdom how did you design for influence to happen in the kingdom no wonder jeremiah 6 16 says thus saith the lord he said stand in the way and find out that old path 616 jeremiah ask for the old path he says wherein is the good way you have to ask you don't assume you ask and when you find it he says walk therein and he assures you that you will find rest for your soul the bible says but they said we will not walk therein hardship has an explanation a mediocre life has an explanation a life of limitation has an explanation becoming a victim of societal and elemental forces has an explanation hallelujah are we together so we must learn to go back to god and ask him how did you create this to work how did you create business to work in Enugu in Nigeria how did you create ministry to work the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said good master what must I do to be saved very responsible gentleman he didn't say can you make me save what must I do I know there is a responsibility component to this what is my own part in it to be saved hallelujah Leadership is a very important aspect of our lives for many reasons. Without leadership, it is impossible for continuity in any life, any ministry, any family. And so the way God designed the system is that anything God wants to last, He creates a tripartite formation around it. Please follow closely. Hallelujah when god created trees you will notice that a tree can stand for hundreds of years is that true there are trees that are hundreds of years old and here was the formation there is the root is that true and then there is the vine itself is that true then the branches that bring the fruits that's how god designed it everything god wants to last he constructs this kind of system that there is something the root connects it to the earth and continues to receive nutrients are we together now yes the the vine midwives the root and then the fruit and the branches are the fruit bearing part of it so when jesus was speaking he said i am the vine he says you are the branches you see that now that if you will ever be fruitful you must be conscious of this formation the moment you try to become the vine you're going to get into trouble that you are the branches and that your productivity only happens with respect to how connected you are to me hallelujah are we together now so most people have failed to rise because they have failed to understand god's structure and god's pattern in ezekiel 37 when you study the bible talks about something that really happened there with prophet ezekiel the resurrection of the ones dry bones who became an exceeding great army did you notice that the first thing that happened was that the bones came together bones talk of structure life is useless flesh is useless until the bones come together remember when when joseph was about to die he said make sure when i'm dead and you are leaving this place carry my bones he was not just talking about his physical bones alone carry a pattern there was a structure 
something kept you in a foreign land and you still excelled it says when you are living there carry it my bones should be a memorial for you hallelujah are we still together yes this is very important so most people do not understand the power of structure and the power of leadership i will talk a bit along these lines no organization and no ministry thrives without understanding leadership now you see the way we start anything is that anything from infancy may not seem to need leadership if you are starting a business all it takes is an idea and perhaps some capital and then you start and you're doing well same thing with a church most likely the church may happen between you your wife and maybe your children and so the the necessity for leadership and the consequences of the absence of leadership may not be seen at that point hallelujah it takes time and as people and organizations evolve you now begin to see the necessity for leadership so when jesus walked upon the earth you would think that the assignment of salvation will be done by him alone even though he was the only one who was sent to die he was not sent to die and kill other people too with him are we together but when jesus walked upon the earth did you notice that for over 30 years there was no need for leadership he didn't call anybody no talk of discipleship no talk of mentorship he was building himself am i right on that but the moment the assignment begun watch this now the bible tells us that when jesus was baptized he returned in the power of the spirit and the next thing that happened was that he selected a few people and the bible says he called them to be with him and then that he might send them so he calls he prays all night and then he selects a group of people 12 of them the bible listed all of them and notice i like the leadership structure of jesus just because he was there doing crusades did not mean that he forgot to build these people there were two things jesus was doing and most people focus on the miracles or do you know that a majority of what you call the gospels were discussions between him and his people are we together now that the beatitudes from matthew chapter 5 and you read down to matthew chapter 11 thereabout these were the lecture manuals jesus was teaching and training his people when he called on these people he would go and preach and mighty things would happen then he would return back dust himself and say gentlemen sit down and let's continue he kept building them building them and then by the time we get to acts chapter one the 12 in company with others making 120 were ready to receive of the spirit of god and to become the extensions of this gospel can i tell you as powerful as salvation is and was it would have failed without leadership the advancement of the gospel today did not just happen because jesus died and resurrected successfully i hope you know they already paid people to silence that news it took leadership in partnership with the holy spirit to prevail over the desire to silence the truth of the resurrection of jesus most people have not seen the value of leadership and so they are unable to rise and they're unable to excel what is leadership let's talk a bit about it what exactly is leadership for many people leadership means someone who is ahead directing people that may not be entirely wrong but that's not absolutely correct leadership is beyond titles leadership is beyond the one who is ahead of others the whole idea of leadership you see is about deploying the grace and the investment of god upon your life and using it to serve so effectively that your results compel people to grant you a gift called loyalty are we together now so the idea of leadership in its essence has nothing necessarily to do with leading people leading people is only the latter aspect of leadership are we learning now 
that leadership in its essence has to do with excelling in your own life and using all the resources that has been given to you by God to so excel that your life and your results become so compelling. It becomes so compelling that people come to join you and they willingly want to adopt your ideas and your philosophies. They give you a gift called loyalty. So you see that for many people, when we talk about a leader, the first thing they are looking for is where are the followers? Where are the people who should follow me as proof that I'm a leader? While it is true that if you are a leader indeed, you will never be alone. Someone must be inspired by your life enough to want to become part of your life. Are we together? But the whole idea is not about people. People are the latter part. The disciples did not just follow Jesus because he called them. They followed him because they saw a man excelling in his life. He excelled in a way that was unusual. Are we learning now? And because of the kind and the quality of excellence that was meted out by his life, when he called them, they saw it as a pleasure to join him. I mean, who would leave a fishing business to join a man just because he said, follow me? It would take more than beckoning on a man to follow me. There was a level of results that they saw in his life. The excellence, the power, the grace. And when he told them, follow me, they were so glad because men will always want to be part of what works. Nobody will want to be part of a failed system. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, because most people do not know that leadership depends on the leader's personal excellence first. We are more titled conscious and so all we want to do is to accumulate as many followers. Listen to me carefully because you will know why your church is not growing. Your church is not growing because you are focused on looking for members rather than becoming a true picture of what God has called the believer to be. Are you seeing that now? That a preacher comes and all that is in his mind is how can I grow this church as we say from 30 members to 200 members and all he's focused on doing is studying all the publicity skills. You will never grow a church that way. No. And believe me, I know what I'm saying. People follow inspiration. People follow what looks like a revelation of what they should become. Are we together now? Most leaders in Africa fail because they are follower conscious. They are not conscious of evolving, becoming more superior versions of themselves, deploying their giftings to serve in such a way that becomes compelling for followership. Followership was supposed to be a reaction, not a call. Followership was supposed to be a reaction. Remember we prayed before we started this, this and I took the journey very slowly so that when we start now, you will understand. Isn't it amazing? This should be a paradigm sheet for someone already. The next time you say, where are my members? You ask the wrong question. Why am I not an inspiration enough? That's the right question. Why, I, why is the anointing not speaking enough? The wisdom not speaking enough? Because the Bible says where the carcasses are, it says there the eagles will gather. So if there are people, I don't know the, 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 um, the number of people in Enugu state, but if there are this many people in Enugu state and the southeast and nobody is interested in coming to see your business or your ministry, don't blame them. They are not mad people. They have intelligence, but they want to pursue what reflects their aspiration. And if you are not a motivation enough, they will not follow. Hallelujah. My dear people, did you ever meet Zuckerberg as a person? Did he ask you to become part of Facebook? Did you ever meet Elon Musk as a person? Did he ask you to be part of Twitter and all of these, his products? All these men are focused on doing is evolving. And the moment they evolve, you are compelled to even follow their advancement. You want to know what is the latest without them asking you because their lives have become such an inspiration. This is the correct idea of leadership. True leaders never even know they are leaders until they find out they are leaders. 
because they are focused on building they are focused on growing they are focused on evolving this is true for a man of god my god i hope you did not miss what you just heard that leadership has nothing necessarily to do with looking for followers a leader who goes around looking for followers has failed that is a burden god did not give you no we look for souls not followers followers were designed to respond to a kind of transition a kind of believer that you become ladies and gentlemen if you hear right now that bill gates or any of the leaders in the secular has arrived enugu whether you are invited or not you will be surprised that as calculated as you are you will find yourself there hanging around the corridors of where he is not because he will talk to you not because he knows you are there but someone has arrived that represents an inspiration in some way am i are we right on that nobody has ever asked zuckerberg to say you are a small boy he talks with kings and presidents and they greet him like colleagues because his his results has added to his age are we together when people begin to ask things like how old are you you are a small child they are only telling you it's a subliminal way of saying your life is not compelling enough now here's what we teach so i am a pastor right and i want to run a church and all that i do is please can you help me with two hundred thousand to produce posters to produce uh, and then i lie down on the posters and roll around and pray and say god you know you called me and we go around i just meet someone by the road and say listen you need to come to my church you have no idea what you are going to get look at that kind of burden when such a member comes to your church do you know you just invited trouble because you will have to dance to their tune how about businesses there are certain parts that have you have you seen certain products that are only sold in just one or two stores and well this is a business area so i'm not sure everybody sells everything i'm, I'm not sure but there are times where you can go around only to find and sometimes you will hear that the man locked the door and went to sleep you will look for the man's house and say sir i need to travel this spare part they hear, they say you are the only one listen if you listen to what i'm sharing with you you walk out of this place you will never have to walk alone again because you will find out that something about your life you will soon be learning that competence has a presence it can invite the people mandated to look for you yes it does yes it does yes it does absolutely it does are we together so leadership please hear me whether you're a campus president whether you're a pastor here when you become member conscious follower conscious huh? you have already ruined your potential for effective leadership do you know why god did not give you eyes at the back if god gave you eyes at the back it will be a corruption of his desire for you to go forward the only way to turn back is when all of you has to turn back you see that now i can reach my hand without turning back but if i have to turn back a major part of me has to turn back because it is rather a once in a while thing it should not be your default state to always turn back so every other thing was do you notice that you are more at peace when you are moving forward than backward god designed it that way as a message that we are supposed to always be going forward the path of the just being as a shining light that goes more and more even onto the perfect day so have this at the back of your mind ladies and gentlemen that looking for members looking for followers is a poor approach to leadership 
that leadership is about rediscovering yourself taking advantage of all the forces of advantage that God has given you and to use it to live such a dexterous life that on the strength of your results your results become so compelling for everybody around your area it becomes impossible for them to ignore your presence as a result on their own accord they come and want to follow you we call that loyalty they give you the gift of loyalty and on your own part we call it influence now they allow you to influence them what does it mean to influence to influence means to compel men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty I have influenced you if I can get you to think along this line without putting a knife on your throat so that your life now becomes a product of these philosophies hmm. are we learning yes. this idea of leadership changed my life and gave me peace because when you become member and follower conscious you will never be able to allow succession there are many consequences to the prior belief there as you'll be learning there are many wrong mindsets that african and sadly nigerian leaders have that's why there is no continuity you do you hardly find hundred year old businesses in nigeria and africa because of their idea of leadership you see that now yes blessed be the name of the lord From, from a governance standpoint, leaders have three assignments. When I say governance, that means having to do with people and resource management. You understand what I mean now? Yes. From a standpoint of people and resource management, leaders have three mandates. Let me give it to you. Number one. The first mandate of any leader with respect to people now is to harness and coordinate potentials. Please write. To harness and to coordinate potentials. What does it mean to harness? Please pay attention. Especially if you're a minister of the gospel. This is a revelation that God is going to bring for you now. The way God sends people to your life, your church, he never sends people in their perfected state yet. To harness means to see potential. To harness means to have the faculty of discernment. Are we together now? Yes. If not, you will reject the greatest gift God gave you simply because he did not come in a form that can be appreciated. I can tell you this, any leader will tell you that the people you now celebrate in his or her life if you had seen them when they came you would not want to receive them as a gift now this quality of leadership many people do not have we usually want to see ready-made people i want to see a millionaire they hear they say you are a billionaire please you are welcome to my church whereas there are five other potential billionaires who can be eaten eternal support if you are willing to see their destiny in Christ and then to laboriously raise them listen from a governance standpoint you are not a leader if you lack discernment is the reason why every man of God your the next 10 20 years of your church is not in view if you cannot see those that will serve now even when they've not seen themselves the person may think I'm an usher but you are seeing your next prayer leader even though he does not yet know that is leadership leaders see far ahead through the faculty of discernment that someone as he's answering the altar call you are looking at that young lady and you can see you can see through her and see her heart that this will be one of the most effective secretary in this ministry that is why when you see the way leaders raise people it takes knowing God and trusting them to really know what they are doing. You know that a leader is effective because he will not make sense for a long time. 
Are we together? Leaders are more of people of vision than logic. And when logic conflicts with vision, they drop logic and embrace vision. There are people today in my life and in ministry, as at the time I saw them, you would never believe. Some of these people were cultists. We are not even talking of a backslider. We are talking of a cultist, like real cultist. But you can see that a mighty champion for the kingdom can come out of it. I'm saying this because the reason why some of you are at this point in your life is because you have been looking for finished products. You have, you have not had the ability to harness. Many parents today are biting their fingers in regret because had they seen the destiny of their children, they would not call them the names they called them before. Now the child you said will never rise has become a champion and you are saying it's my child and he said you are not my mother. My mother is not the one who gave birth to me, it's the one who believed in me. Today, many people are claiming a stake in destinies they did not invest in because they did not have the opportunity. Are, are we together now? Yes. With all due respect, I can say this since it's a leadership meeting. There are pastors who fight claiming members and say, this person is my person. No. The person knows who is their pastor. The person who believed in them and invested in them. Are we together? Not the person who knew them before they rose. If you met me hungry and you say, remember, I used to know you, so what? What did you do about my hunger? The one who saw me hungry and saw that if I'm filled and dragged me and helped me, that is the person I'll become loyal to. Do you know why there is a generation that is disloyal to God and disloyal to parents and all of that? Because we have lost the ability to harness. Just because the child is stubborn does not mean the call is not on his life. Do you have, can you pay the price of harnessing? Are we together? Just because the lady is a village girl does not mean she will remain in Shushan forever. Be careful so that you don't insult Esther. She will be queen one day. Just because Ruth lost her husband and children, I hope you know that Boaz is in her destiny. So be careful as you throw her away. Hmm. Just because Naomi is a quiet widow, don't throw her away. She may be the only person to tell you what to do about Boaz. The ability to harness. Listen, I'm saying this because this grace must come on somebody that you can stand in Enugu and look around. And you will see rubble somewhere and God will say buy that land just buy it the ability to harness is an extension of the spirit of discernment if you have this you will own the future you will not follow you will literally know that the next 10 years I've, I've talked to you about my story many of you here you may have listened to my teaching this was when they were selling CDs you know when they sell cassettes and CDs and the Lord told me that in the future it will be difficult to buy CDs and all of that because technology will take over. And he said, carry your messages, put it online. My angel will send it to the nations. This is how I will announce you. The ability to harness. How many people had the intuition to start a particular business? But they said, ah, this thing is too hard. What you call pure water today? What they, what they call it here? Pure water, yeah? Still water. You know what I'm talking about. Once upon a time, leather, leather that you produce here, ice water, thank you, and you wrap the thing and then ice it. The person buys the ice and is patient until it defrosts. Remember it now? But someone looked and said, no. May my God open your eyes. I say it again. May my God open your eyes. I prophesy to you from the depth of my spirit. May my God open your eyes. See what others are not seeing. Hear what others are not hearing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Please be seated. The ability to harness is leadership indeed. Para soka parusi enakasu blendikias. 
the ability to harness the ability to harness God can bring somebody who will be the greatest prayer leader who can die with you but because your eyes have not been washed with eyes out you can push them away and you get to a point in ministry where you say God I'm tired he said but I've sent five people to you you didn't have the eyes to see you were looking for partners you were looking for rich men learn this dear people God does not send people in their finished state he hides his glory and covers it with limitations and sends it to you do you know why so that you become part of their growth that is how you end their loyalty you cannot end the loyalty of a man who you did not invest in his growth are we together one man one day saw me and called me son i said no i respect you don't call me son that name is an expensive name what investment did you bring in my life that you want to call me son all these people who just just because you are older than me does not mean i'm your son i must i must i must acknowledge that i'm your son what investment did you make in my life people just claim success and bully you and say look I, no no sir Are we together the ability to harness my question is how many gifts have you driven this year how many gifts that house boy you threw away he may not be very intelligent but he will never steal from you did you know that there was something locked up there you didn't have the patience to build him when you drove him somebody you see they say one man's food is another man's uh, poison say so why saying unfortunately hallelujah so you drive someone and then before you know it someone will receive that someone you drove and say listen i don't mind building you sincerity is what i've been looking for and since this man looks for profit more than sincerity let him keep looking for profit while i build profit out of sincerity it is nobler to have sincerity first then you can build profit out of it how do you throw sincerity in search for profit? Hallelujah. Some of you have thrown some of the greatest gifts God gave you because you could not see. God gave you children and you threw all of them, speaking to them every day. I'm not proud of you. Look at this other person's child. At 21, they are already building a house. Shame on you. The way you are like this no brain no husband no money no nothing you have brought me shame and the children keep looking at you and they said all right since you have officially proved that you do not believe in us let's go and look for those who believe in us and then they come and meet someone who says you know what uh, i see that you have a lot of problems you just need to learn sit down this is what jesus did to them he gathered these ordinary men and said gentlemen sit down and watch what i make out of your life after three and a half years even though they ran away when he came back as a leader he still gathered them he said i understand even me i was afraid at some point i don't blame you and when they saw his ability to harness them they died preserving the gospel do you want people to be able to die for you you think it's everybody that can die for you let trouble come that's when you know they never believed in you they were just with the ceremony of salary they never believed in you many leaders today are pained because they did not invest in people they only recruited people beyond recruiting you see I run my life organizationally speaking and ministerially speaking I turn everybody under my care it doesn't matter whether you are coming as an employer or you are coming as a son as a daughter it does not matter i give them a family mentality so that beyond money they know they are stakeholders in this vision i invest in them beyond what they receive if salary is the only thing that joins you which say your driver you you are in trouble the day he has a choice to choose between him and you who will die that's when you will know that he loves himself more than you 
It is amazing how we magically believe as leaders that just because people say daddy, mommy, automatically they are loyal to you. Loyalty is an expensive product. You buy it with years of investment, not inheritance. Are we learning this morning? Yes, sir. I once met a gentleman, true story, I think two or three years ago. I met him. I had preached years ago in their university somewhere in the northeast and he got born again in that conference. Later would become the president of I think the FCS or so and then had long graduated, set up a real estate company and then one day he comes to me, I'm done with service, seeing people and he says, can you remember me? So I said, not exactly. And he tells me that story and says, today God has helped me. I own a real estate company. I just brought something to come and tell you thank you. Don't be annoyed. That gentleman, when he was getting saved, he did not look like it. But since you were part of his history, you qualify to be part of his future. If you were not there when I was hanging in the cross, please, when you see me sitting at the banquet, don't come. Because you are certainly not invited. I'm saying this so that many of us will start making adjustments now. There are people you need to call to say, come, come. I can still work on you. Come back. Come. I can work on you. Um, you are very hard working. But I see that this tendency for stealing. Okay, let's work on it. Go and fast for three days and come. You are, you are here for business. But I will deal with this spirit of stealing. The ability to extract evil and separate it and keep the good is mastery of leadership. That you can see people and say, ah, this person has this, this person has this. You see that now? And you are able to say, you know what? You, you seem to be a very dishonest person, but you are very diligent. Let's, let's at least let's make an attempt to work on that dishonesty. Leadership is hard work at a governance level because your first mandate as a leader, are we learning already, is to harness and coordinate. What does it mean to coordinate? To put people around the areas of their strength so that you make a team out of them. There are people who, on a scale of one to 10, their honesty level will never cross four, but you need them. So you know where to put them. You never put them in accounts. No, even if you fast for one year, the temptation on a scale of one to ten, as a leader, you have gauged them. Their honesty level would not. When you preach about rapture, it rises to four. Can you imagine that kind? And yet, you need these people in your life. I wish I can tell you, you will only, having the best hands does not mean having the perfect hands. You design the system that makes it the best by putting all kinds of people. So you know where to put Thomas. Don't drive him. You will still need him. You know where to put Peter. Peter is not patient like John, but he must be part of the apostles. When you want to reveal certain things about divine realities, go to John. He's called the beloved. Peter is not called the beloved. Peter is a man of faith. He will deny you and come back and say sorry. John will stand with you on the cross. Do you know how to see these kinds of people? I hope I'm not wasting your time this morning. As a parent, God gives you four children. You can design a system around these four. There is one who is very insecure but honest so that person has a tendency of gossiping what everybody is doing in a way to secure you as a you know the person the person is not hard working but you can trust the person with information there is one who does not care about anybody including you the parent they want to make it they love you but they will not tell you they feel embarrassed to be weak there is another who does not care really wherever they are just like water you put them in a bowl they look like a bowl you put them in a plate they look like a plate then there is another one that satan wants to take advantage of your ability to sit down and say i can build a team out of this this one has a strength of speaking 
he just does not have the ability to coordinate himself so my response to this person is to give the person more confidence because that is his deficiency this one does not need motivation he's self-motivated what he needs is to create limits to his passion this is leadership you are literally designing the glory of God in lives hallelujah thank you listen don't you think ministry is all about preaching you can preach and die after your preaching because a wrongly constructed leadership structure will pierce you with many sorrows it is my assignment i can tell you as many as my people are i can write books on almost every one of them i know their strengths and their limitations i know what they can do and cannot do Rather than driving them, you build a team around them. You know that this person, there are people who are not intelligent, but they are obedient. If you put them in an area of creativity, you have lost it. But give them instructions, they will obey to the latter. Those guys should not be heads of units, but you put them in the most active position within the department. They will go to the market and buy clothes. They will bargain for one hour to save the department money. There are others who don't have that time hallelujah there are those who will you give them 10 naira they will tell you i use one naira i'm so sorry i was thirsty i used one cobble out of that one naira to take water i will return it they are that meticulous there are others when you give them 100 naira just know that even if you send them to buy something of 30 naira accept the rest as a seed just focus on the results but the change for sure will not return Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let me finish. So the first mandate of a leader from a governance standpoint is the ability to harness and coordinate. Write that down. That's number one harness and coordinate say harness say coordinate harness and coordinate that harness part we're going to pray it because in the name of Jesus your eyes must see your eyes must see your eyes must see see what others are not seeing see what others are not seeing see what others are not seeing I know someone who during COVID in South Africa, when other people, is an Igbo man, he became literally a billionaire without exaggeration because during COVID, he knew that eventually they will have to meet people who will buy this, um, um, what they call the thing, the nose mask. Yes, the face mask. And when other people were just trying to smuggle at a retail level, he went to the government and said, listen, this is what I can design for you. There are so many people I can, I can be sure to bring you, whether from China or wherever. Had an intelligent negotiation with them and then they signed the contract. He became one of the few main suppliers. This nose mask you see. When the man called me and said it, I said, ah, this man. I said this, to be honest with you, I said these evil people, what grace did God give them like this? Whereas there was someone there shouting and saying, God, will you not change my life? And God is saying, are you not seeing? I gave you eyes different from hands so that you can see. If Lot saw what Abraham saw, he would not go to Sodom and Gomorrah. He looked around and did not see anything and went and settled near Sodom. And God told Abraham, he said, now lift your eyes northward, turn not, uh, southward as far as your eyes can see. Is it alright if I ask you to lay your hands prophetically on your eyes and say, Lord, open my eyes to people. Open my eyes to mantles. Open my eyes to opportunities. What is my wife carrying that I'm not seeing? What is my child carrying that I'm not seeing? What are my fellowship people carrying that I'm not seeing? What is House on the Rock carrying that I'm not seeing? What is Reverend Edwin carrying that I'm not seeing? 
what is my business carrying that I'm not seeing what could be that is not yet oh God open my eyes to see it hallelujah praise the name of the Lord harness and coordinate the ability to see potentials even when they have not become the ability to see potentials when they have not become hallelujah and this is what I'm doing even in our ministry training leaders the current leaders to be able to see others you cannot build a global ministry when you don't train people to see you have to train the ability to see can be taught that if I look at you right now I should be able to get any pastor with all due respect in house on the rock here and say build me three teams and you can reproduce the results because of your ability to see and from the people seated here don't go outside just interact with the people and look for five people for me I did something not too long I while we're preparing, I'd not been to my village for over 20 years. And so like two, three years ago, I decided to go there and put a crusade. And among the people who were setting up, there was a young man that I kept looking at. Immediately I saw, I saw my next leader. And the guy was involved in the finances. He was very accountable. He was doing what he was doing. And I was smiling. That's leadership. And you go back to God and say, this is this. I carried this young man from the village, brought him to Abuja for one year, and I trained him. I now sent him back to go and raise 25 other people. Listen, let me tell you what this gentleman did. I don't know if I could do it. I had to travel a few weeks down and ask them to come. The kind he turned these 25 people into, you know, the foxes of Samson. This gentleman went with this spirit. I never got an auditorium got everything all the programs charity welfare boreholes everything I just send the resources and tell him send me updates one year if you have not been able to raise anybody you are not a leader do you know what I mean to raise not to see someone almost finishing then you just add icing on the cake to raise from ground up receive that grace in Jesus name it is the reason why you find campus fellowships on fire then a set will now graduate and have you seen that happen in campuses a group of vibrant people is like a set that are men of fire and when all of them are in final year the campus people start crying because they focus they focus on impact which was good but they did not focus on raising others I'm coming there and you find out that as soon as they graduate the campus goes down spiritually or the business goes down spiritually so you had three people running your store and you were netting 10 million 100 million per annum 1 billion per annum and you did not add other people now you send the first competent person to say Port Harcourt the second competent person to Lagos you are left alone and now all the other people who are there are thieves because you did not take the time to build. Now you are doing an emergency response system and your business is going down. Can I tell you the truth? This is the mistake with all due respect of the West. They ignored raising people. They focused on those who were already vibrant, who were products of crusades of men like Billy Graham and the rest. And the young people they raised now did not know that they were supposed to raise others again. I'm praying for you that you don't be carried away by your current success but that you master the art of investing and raising people amen. shout a loud amen. amen let me give you number two quickly what is the second mandate of leaders to inspire and to influence the second mandate of all leaders organizationally speaking is to inspire and to influence and you do that by using your results anybody who cannot inspire cannot be a leader anybody 
who cannot inspire what does it mean to inspire to inspire means to motivate to inspire means to create a picture before those who follow you and I hope you know that even the Holy Spirit inspires men Elihu said in chapter 32 of Job remember there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty the inspiration other versions will use make it men of understanding who can look at your life today and go back on a three days retreat because of something they saw who can look at your life today and make up their minds that I will never live a careless life again your life is supposed to be a living epistle the kind of result you command and produce from a spiritual standpoint from a financial standpoint from an intellectual standpoint that when you speak to people they are blessed by whatever subject you are discussing but then they also study your thought processes and it compels them to go back and work on themselves are we together that's right many things should happen when people come to church receiving the word as we call it should just be one of the many things that happen people should be greatly inspired hallelujah yeah. greatly inspired all wise greatly inspired so as you come from the worship team as you are leading a song of worship someone who has the mandate of God to be a worshiper while they are enjoying the song they are seeing your rehearsal they are seeing your excellence and someone makes up his mind and says that last embarrassment in the ministration it will be the last forever I am learning by this person so they look forward to coming to church yes to hear pastor Edwin but before then they want to hear this person have you noticed that there are certain people congregations are happy when they come when they come up it is not politics it's inspiration every time they come they are happy let's hear what he's going to say now lesson number next what do I have to learn in the five minutes he's coming to take offering he's coming maybe a welcome note he's coming to teach and they know that they will be inspired always don't downplay the passion of people to be inspired if you don't inspire people they will respect you but they will not follow you you can inspire a generation this is the whole idea of being an influencer. Unfortunately, that concept is always to the negative, sadly. An influencer is not someone on social media. An influencer is someone whose life is so dexterous, whose results is so compelling, that people will want to adopt first your philosophies because you represent a future they desire. May you become such a one in the name of Jesus Christ. Becoming an inspiration demands that you be competent. Please write it down. Becoming an inspiration demands that you be competent. At every level of your growth, you can be the best current version of yourself. If you are a preacher and you are coming to the pulpit to preach, for God's sake, do your homework. Don't come on the pulpit and say, don't worry. Whatever you hear, just receive it like that. Now, even if what you are saying is the truth, you are not inspiring. As a leader, you don't come and display weakness before your people. You see, you don't display weakness and say, I'm being real. You have to be careful because they look at you and they lose confidence in you. Everybody wants to follow a person. Now, write this down, please. Psychologically speaking, there are six psychological needs that every man every man craves for can I read the list for you this is proven now we're, we're in a leadership meeting so am I am I at, at liberty to do that number one the greatest psychological need of all men six of them together one is the need for security please write it down men will do anything to find security and if you are a leader that can give them a template and a vision of security spiritual security financial security anything that gives them security what is security the ability to minimize or if possible drive their fears and their confusions security number two variety 
people like newness mass communication thrives on this when you are watching a football match even though you know it will remain on the internet there forever you still want to be live and you can pay to be live breaking news breaks because it is new am i right on that nobody visits last week news with the kind of passion they have for today's news now everybody wants to know what is happening between israel and hamas and all of that you see now variety it is the reason why god gave man creativity so that you can bring various forms of delivering the same result are we together is the reason why you can see a toyota car among your car collections then you go and buy lexus even by the same company then you go and buy mercedes you buy they are all cars after all they all move you so why the passion for that variety how come you have a black cloth a white one then you have a green one and you still plan to buy a red one maybe after this conference am i right on that so what 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 and you will you will not agree that it is lost you call it variety is that true so all men crave for variety number three all men crave for significance this is particularly unique with the male gender significance why will i quarrel you when you call me brother joshua selman why do i get angry i say my friend don't call me brother is brother an insult brother is not an arm robber so why am i angry that you said brother jo <laughs> like some of you i remember many years ago I, I, where did i go to preach for god's sake and they brought one guy one musician and they called him one kind of name when he came up he rebuked the people and he said i am not this is i am pastor this ah i said my friend you would have just ministered and gone to sit down you have you have closed the heavens that hallelujah significance to know that you matter to know that you count don't downplay people's sense of significance when I came in, I saw, and thanks to Reverend Edwin and the entire leadership, the warmth and the love right from the airport, the hospitality and all that I've received since I came here, very phenomenal, and for this I am grateful. But it's significance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I tell you, people do not care what you know until they know that you care. They don't care what revelation, what Greek and Hebrew. By the time you make people feel stupid and you make them feel less of themselves, they will love you, but you will never earn their loyalty. Is someone growing today? Significance. So we need to be careful and manage the way we speak to people and the way we generally operate with people. Knowing that the moment people feel insignificant around you, there is a negative energy that comes from you to them there's a pungency that comes from you to them. They will run away every time they see you. And they will never support anything you are part of. Are we learning? Number four, love and acceptance. The fourth psychological need of everybody, including you who is writing, is love and acceptance. The very reason people join occultic societies. You interview many people who join occultic societies, they will tell you, Daddy did not believe in me. Mommy did not believe in me. Is the reason why sadly we are losing our young ladies and even the gentlemen to all kinds of ungodly systems. Because the love and acceptance. Did you know that the worst thing that can happen to any man is called rejection? Rejection is to be given a perception that you are not needed within a space. It's a terrible thing. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's a terrible thing. Rejection is so, is so serious that the Bible gives you a counsel that when you get to a place, sit at the back first. Just sit at the back there to save yourself shame. If you are worthy of honor, they will usher you to the front. But if you come and sit at the front and they now transport you gently to the back, it will be a memory you will have for a long time. Rejection is a terrible thing. Hallelujah. Many children today grow with all kinds of things they they hate people and they hurt others because they grew up with this rejection that they got from parents sadly some of those parents were also preachers saving the world but destroying their own home 
so you call your child a stupid useless boy very ugly girl i don't think any man will marry you are such a stupid person you are taking the the least position in class and then they are absorbing these things absorbing these things absorbing these things by the time they become teenagers any gentleman who says wow you mean there's such a lady in this world and have i been blind you know how men talk the lady knows that this boy is going to destroy her but she cannot resist him because he's the only voice that ministers love and acceptance hallelujah are we learning number what now number five growth the fifth psychological need of everybody is the need for growth what does it mean to grow to become to evolve superior versions of yourself mother when you give birth to a baby it will be unfair to expect that baby to begin to walk and talk after two months that would be a miracle i think am i right on that but after a year or two perhaps three years and the child is not walking not talking not coordinating himself you become disturbed because we expect growth even the baby expects growth when you plant anything corn or yam millet whatever it is you give it time but with time you want to see evidences of growth am i right on that so human beings crave for growth that's why when we write exams and the results come out when we pass we rejoice because it means growth more than success it means growth number five six six impact and contribution the sixth and final psychological need of all men is the need to be perceived as one who is impactful and one whose life is counting hallelujah praise the name of the Lord sir I understand this is you and your wife please come let's celebrate them keep clapping honor them come on house on the rock please come sir I won't embarrass you I won't please stand keep clapping I didn't ask you to stop you just keep clapping don't stop do what I'm asking you to do don't stop hallelujah now watch this do you know what you just did to them you kept clapping they have a right to interpret your clap to be anything for some your clap means you are important for some your clap means look how beautiful your family is for some your clap means that as you performed your role as husband and wife here in the capacity of ministers you did an excellent job for some it just means you are dressing well you leave them the, it is their creativity that defines the meaning of your clap but in any sense you have won their love for you by giving them a sense of value i brought them out to define for you the highest psychological need of any man that the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved to feel appreciated and to feel important this is what was communicated in your club now can i tell you now that i am the midwife to make this happen talk against me and see how they will respond are we together yes for making them feel good i just ask them to come out so that you will learn a miracle happens ladies and gentlemen when you make people feel that they count in a home in an organization you have five children you make one feel like a champion and the remaining feel like failures is the negative of what is happening right now that you're doing every time i gather with my leaders they celebrate me for what you know god is doing and i tell them ladies and gentlemen we are here as a team i only succeed because of the coordinated effort of everyone and i want you to know that you count you matter are we together now and you do that they will usually act like nothing is happening but a miracle is happening right there hallelujah before i came up 
Reverend Edwin introduced me and he said wonderful things and you all clapped and I was happy. Me, I don't hide it. I will smile and say I'm grateful. Are we together now? So you ask me to come back again, I will most likely come back. Why? Because I love Jesus but number two, when you help people see that they matter, they will love you. You become Beulah and Hephzibah in a moment. Hallelujah. So if I tell Madam now and Pastor, I say, look, um, what, what, what's your meal in this city? I mean, serious, what, what's your Igbo meal in this? Is it Abacha? I thought it was Swallow. Ah. Bitter Leaf. Okay, you are right. Whatever you said, you are right. <laughs> Praise God. Are we together? Now, if I'm coming to their house and I say, Madam, I'm coming to eat. The memory of how I made her feel. Now, you imagine that I reverse it now. I insult this woman, insult her husband, tear them down, make them feel like they are not counting in House on the Rock. And I say, I'm coming to their house. Number one, I will sit outside. My chair will be waiting for me before I arrive. You know, there are people whose chair, you just put it under a tree there. And the water they will drink is right there. Thank you. Let's honor him again. And the wife. Hallelujah. There are people today whose children are not proud of because every time they are around you, you are going to look for something wrong. Why is this shirt not ironed? They came to say good afternoon and you must find something wrong. Learn to let people know that they count. And this is especially true for spiritual people because they are focused on the prayer, the anointing, and the people do their best. They fix up the place for prayer and you don't see it. We are focusing on Jesus, they don't see it. Your wife dresses, she gives her best. It's true you are going for a prayer meeting, but take out time to see. Mm -mm. And women, you too, the man too, does his best, at least the best he knows to do. It may not be your best, but the best, and then you are not seeing it. Last week, the battery of his watch died. This week, he had fixed it. You didn't see the difference. <laughs> are we together? Can I tell you the truth? There is always tension when someone's worth is downplayed. In many, everywhere you find tension in an organization, it is because someone is intentionally downplaying another person. That is why in complimenting people, psychologically, leaders, if you want to lift someone and compliment the person uniquely, start by sharing a general compliment first. So that everybody can savour the one you gave. Then they will now join you to uniquely appreciate that one person. Over celebrating one person in the presence of people is dangerous. No matter how effective. I know that you have one child who is always taking first position. While the rest share the rest. Be careful. Are we together now? Don't over celebrate that one and say this is daddy's boy. Give me five. The remaining are what now? And you see, you are doing something to them. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive see that for some of you this is the cure go back to your fellowship go back to your home and call a meeting and say I just came back from a leadership meeting in house on the rock as the father now if I were you this is what I would do sit your children down let all of them be ready to listen to you by acknowledging fault yes, sir. if you say sorry nobody will listen I take responsibility I know better now than I used to know thanks to church and I really want to apologize for the many ways that you may have been hurt without my knowledge I intend for the good of this family but we are products of our mindset I'm not ashamed of growing and you see your child losing wow daddy is accepting fault for the first time in 12 years
I'm, tempt, I'm tempted to teach you four expressions. I was doing a training for a few people. I've done it for my people and then in South Africa. Let me teach you. There are four expressions. Use them this night. Use them now. And you will watch the miracle that happens in your life. Can I give it to you? Number one, please. P-L-E-A-S-E. -E. Everyone, write it down. You will be surprised how many doors the word please will open for you. Nigerians, learn it. Please, say it. Please. One more time. Please. In the name of Jesus, say it. Please. please is an expression of courtesy. You become an exceptional leader when you learn to use the word please. These are miracle expressions. When you tell people please, it's a sign of courtesy. It adds to strengthening their sense of significance. Please, could you shift here? Don't say shift now. And then, ba 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 ba, prayer is going on. Shift. Are we together? You pick up a call and you want somebody, you don't, you are out of units. Call me, call me, call me, and you're off the phone. He never calls you again. And the miracle at the other side of the phone goes with the person's annoyance. One more time, say please. please. To your wife, say it, please. To your husband, to your children, as a man of God, please. A sense of courtesy. Number two, thank you. Thank you. Not thanks, thank you. Nigerians, thanks. Someone will spend two weeks begging you for money, harassing you with scripture. The Bible says be good to all men. It says when it is within your power, pastor, you are the one that did this and you finally send the 10,000 naira. Then by night, he now sends one word, thanks. No. No. This is a leadership training. We'll do the miracle service in the night, but this one now, this is a mental miracle service. Is someone learning? Yes. One more time, say thank you. thank you. Don't say thanks. No. If someone is nice and kind to you 20 times, say thank you 20 times. Can I tell you, there are many of you, your partners stop giving to you because they perceive that you were taking them for granted. When thank you becomes too heavy for your mouth, your account will tell them. Thank you. Thank you. When people treat you well, when God honors you with great membership, tell them thank you. Don't say go. They will go. That's when you will know that a people without a vision, they say without a vision, the people perish. But without the people, the vision will suffer. One more time, say thank you. Go back and tell everybody show them the new revelation you found say thank you and you will watch doors open 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 you tell someone thank you they are even surprised thank you to me what for thank you thank you most people tell only jesus thank you and the reason is because they can't see him is hypocrisy that thank you they are saying is because of what they are about to ask You called me to train leaders. <laughs> Reverend Edwin. <laughs> Thank you. Can I give you the third? Yes, I am sorry. Write it down. No. Just write. I'm the one teaching. Just write it down. I am sorry. Not sorry. I am sorry. The expression I am sorry is a miracle. Look at me, please. Please look at me. Is someone learning? No. I am sorry puts you in a position where you are vulnerable without shame. That means you let people know that we are all human. We see in part and we prophesy in part that no matter how great the best of us is still human. When you say I am sorry, you bring people to a point where they are reminded that just like you, they are human. And that to err is human, we say, but then to forgive is divine. One more time, say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nations have gone to war because one person was too proud to say I'm sorry. With all due respect, not to play with your mind, but there are marriages today that would have worked if only one person. I am sorry does not mean I'm the one who is wrong. Sometimes it means I'm the one who is wise. I am sorry is not always about the 
offender offendee who is now the offender now english people teach me well one the person who caused trouble and the person who trouble was caused over <laughs> are we together say i am sorry someone who has been sponsoring you and you never acknowledge the person now the person is pained and angry and you say are we not humans that is not i'm sorry no i'm sorry sir I'm sorry for not being thoughtful i have learned i came to church and now i've been mentored and i'm just here to say i'm sorry so the healing power of i'm sorry is as powerful as the healing anointing did you hear what i said the healing power of i am sorry what i am sorry does is almost the same thing as what the healing anointing does the healing anointing can heal the body but my goodness there are souls that can be healed by telling people i'm sorry the moment you say i'm sorry the person at the other end becomes foolish if he continues from that point because I'm sorry should naturally, not easily, bring an end to all strife. Say, I'm sorry again. I'm sorry. The last expression, God bless you. As simple as this sounds, it is a miracle. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you contains three powerful words. One, God. Two, bless. Three, you. God bless you. Three words that if properly combined can produce a miracle in the mind of the hearers. God bless you. That means you can be better today than you were yesterday. Because I've introduced God, I've introduced his blessings and it is all directed to you. Listen to me. If you leave this place just learning these four expressions alone, you did not waste your time this morning. It will turn your leadership to a miracle. You will manage crisis. Most people think it's all about just prayer and fasting. No, there are times this is the wisdom of the just that the Bible talks about. Hallelujah. I have used this as a person and in leadership and I have watched it work wonders in my life. Let me give you the last mandate of leaders and then we wrap up for this morning session. Are you ready for number three? I want you to pay attention to this third one. Visionary leaders build models and systems. Visionary leaders build models and systems that guarantee succession and continuity. Visionary leaders build models and systems. Please write it. They build models and systems that guarantee succession and continuity when everything ends with you or ends with your absence you failed as a leader africa africa may we arise in the name of jesus do you notice that in many families with all due respect you will hear that a man in his lifetime was a billionaire and he will make the money in his lifetime spend it in his lifetime finish it in his lifetime and die and the next son starts he doesn't even start from zero he starts by managing the father's enemies and uses 20 years of his life to tell them sorry before he starts building his own life this is what we see in africa are we together visionary leaders think beyond themselves they build systems. If your absence collapses a ministry and an organization, it means you are an idol in that ministry, not a leader. Are we together? Yes. I told my people years ago that if they do not see me, this is way before we left Zaria, that if they do not see me, the only thing they should miss is my unique contribution, not a collapse of the purposes of God leaders look beyond themselves they are passionate about raising transforming followers to leaders and then leaders to agents of transformation i learned that from late dr miles munro hallelujah who can do what you are doing to allow you rest 
there are people in their old age they, are they wake up in the morning like young people stressing themselves because they spent their life being so self-centered and they forgot that one day their physical strength will deplete hallelujah who did you raise you became a millionaire you did not reproduce that grace and that understanding in three or four people they would have helped you today that you are resting are we together how about men and women of God isn't it terrible if I'm not able to make church on Sunday and everything goes down because of my absence it means I've been directing the people to me not Jesus are we together leaders build systems say systems say systems say models I'm very honored when I learned sometimes that Reverend Edwin you know he travels you know to see his family and do other and, and to do other things and he told me yesterday and he said that a number of times how that in his absence there is already a structure in place that is very powerful and I must commend Igbo people as a nation for having that understanding I think you have a system I see that work even and, and I'm saying that honestly so that a man can start with one store uh, you know that's a Jewish system is still is practiced in Israel even up until now yes it's true so one store and then he will get um, um I, if I understand you correctly maybe two or three people and then train them pragmatically the man can travel to China to bring goods and the boy is running it and then soon he will establish branches and annexes and they now learn on the job one day he will settle the person and the person can continue that is powerful because the person you are helping may be the one to help you tomorrow are we together yes listen I know that sometimes we treasure the knowledge that we've had through the years because it came through sweat through blood and pain but you must be vulnerable to trust somebody with what you know everybody is not a deceiver and everybody will not fail you do not allow your pain and your scars don't allow the injury to affect you so much that you don't trust anybody don't like Elisha I know that we say Gehazi was not there to collect Elisha's mantle I sympathize with Gehazi but I also blame Elisha you can still raise other people if you raise one and he failed raise another one if you raise one and he failed is that not true yes the power of reproduction is a miracle the word re means again if a woman loses her pregnancy respectfully speaking there is hope that she can be pregnant again if you raise somebody and it does not respect you breaks your heart and goes no problem leave them in peace they will reap what they have sold you start again again is a powerful word again is a powerful word I'm wrapping up with this now visionary leaders sustain the faculty to start again this church is a product of the word again am I right on that I understand the bit of the history of the church and and and, and you know Reverend Edwin had, had graciously told me the story and I saw that yesterday he would have stayed and you people would have been meeting somewhere outside with a legitimate excuse isn't it amazing i know rain washed your house but have you seen the place for a new land someone say again prophesy to yourself say again amen. you went down spiritually but there is hope for a tree again leaders have the ability to give people a chance to start again and that they themselves can start again i want to end my discussion we're going to pray but this is important for you to know. Again is a miracle. Adam knew his wife. Cain came. Abel came. And then Abel, um, Cain killed Abel. Remember? And then the Bible tells us that Adam knew his wife again. The man went back to business again. Samson, haven't lost your eyes and your hair. You still have hands and you still have the God who gives all. You can go back again. Ruth, it is true that the first phase of your family life went down. Lost your husband, lost your children, but you still have Naomi. Always be conscious of what you have left. Because with what you have left, it is enough for that word again. You lost your job. But you still have wisdom start again 
This is a prophetic word God is giving someone. You did ministry, but because you were wrongly mentored, you did a lot of things that you now know are not consistent with scripture. Don't sit beating yourself, crying forever. Yes, you once lived a wayward life. For God's sake, don't talk about Rahab, the prostitute, when she has become Rahab, the woman of God. There are two Rahabs here. Be mindful of the one you are talking about. Hallelujah. God gives us an opportunity to have the yesterday version of ourselves, today version of ourselves, and tomorrow version of ourselves. You can remain in your yesterday version or you can take advantage of the mystery called again to evolve. Again means evolve. Again means try for a greater version of yourself. Your yesterday version was not anointed, but hallelujah. Thank God for Soul Conference 2023 you can start again man of god you can go back and build that fellowship again you can build your home again remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old the bible says for behold see conceive as a reality in your spirit i do a new thing in leadership reverend edwin would attest to it and every other leader here there are moments where you will have to give people a chance. People will make mistakes. Perhaps you as the leader yourself, you will make all kinds and all shades of mistakes. Can I tell you? The moment you learn your lesson and draw wisdom from your pain, you have cheated it. Lamenting and crying over yesterday, you carry 10 million naira and put it in a wrong business and put it in a wrong investment. How long will you keep crying? hallelujah how long will you keep crying david i know you prayed and prayed and prayed that the child would not die but the child is now dead stop watering a dead plant it is dead start finding seeds quickly before another harvest will come and you have not sown anything you can try to water a dying plant hoping that it will come back but when it is dead it is dead you can use that dead plant as the manure for the next plant and get seeds listen today god has helped us to be leaders not because we had perfect people around us and not because we were perfect ourselves are we together but this mystery again archive it in your mind add it in the bag that you use to sojourn in destiny you will need it give people a chance to make honest mistakes Give people a chance to disappoint you honestly and give them a chance to recover. This is what happened. If I believe if Judas had gone to Jesus, Judas would have become Apostle Judas. I don't know who asked him to kill himself. He lost the money. He lost his life. He lost his bishopric. Peter who told Jesus, I will not leave you. Remember? He ran away. And because of his fear, he called a young girl woman because he was running away from Jesus. All in an effort to deny Jesus. But after all of that, he went back to fishing and look at Jesus. I like the leader Jesus, not just the savior Jesus. Jesus is now back to life and he goes to the seashore and says, little children, have you any catch? Not even recognizing it was him. He said, cast your net to the right side. And when they caught so much fish, Peter discerned, who else can do this kind of miracle? And Peter came to him, he said, depart from me. Ah, you've come to torture me now. You want to give me the memory of the last 72 hours. I betrayed you, I ran away, you invested in me. But give people a chance. When Jesus... Peter came to him he simply sat to eat and he said Simon Bajona lovest thou me more than this and Peter said no I made this mistake I will not make it again this man died for Jesus imagine understanding the Bible without Peter's contribution Thomas that you call doubting Thomas I hope you know there is a book of Thomas he was not canonized to become part of the 66 books but my goodness, Bible history tells us that that man Thomas was a mighty man. He was powerful. One time, 
history tells us that he literally laid hands on someone to cast out a spirit and a physical object came out of the person just because he doubted does not mean he was a doubter forever we say doubting he only doubted for one day you how many times have you done it let's be fair on the guy hallelujah can i tell you many people not few will disappoint you when the bible says to put a breastplate of righteousness do you know why there will be many piercings on your chest as a leader you need to put it you will raise people who would downplay your contribution leaders bleed and cry all the time there are others who have even carried pain and ship that pain to their children their wives their husbands you will find people disappoint you in organizations some of you are seated right now and you almost cannot manage the pain that has come you gave someone money he ran away with it he cheated you lied against you did all kinds of things my assignment as i wrap up this leadership session is that you cannot keep crying forever no jesus wept but not forever if he kept crying he would not become a savior he will remain jesus the baby the first time he cried was when he was born the second time he cried was when he was in pain with lazarus the third time he would cry he was in gethsemane for the sake of his assignment these are the only three reasons why you should cry you should cry because you are a child ignorance you should cry because you are moved with compassion and sometimes you cry because of the burden of your assignment any other reason is not valid hmm. is this a good place to wrap up has god spoken to someone listen the only thank you gift that you can give reverend edwin is to go back and listen to this teaching i know you are motivated now but you may forget in search of a miracle by night go and get this teaching after this conference be like the wise men listen to it again gather the people in your organization i've done the speaking for you sit down with them and say nobody goes out you people are listening to this in the name of jesus let them sit down and listen to it and cry while they listen make resolutions while they listen and you pray and reform your organization for the next level i conclude by challenging you that leadership is a noble responsibility you have the opportunity to serve your nation with what god has given you serve your generation with what god has given you and inspire others to do same at the end of your life you will be known for only two things the problems you solved and the ones you created hallelujah the hymn writer says thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling only to be remembered by what we have done not just what we said not just what we wished but what we did at the end of my life it's my commitment to do the best that i can helping and inspiring my generation to love jesus to serve him and to know that there is no limit to the life of the believer who is in Christ. And this is what I'm committed to doing as a man of God and as a leader. And I've come to share Reverend Edwin's passion even at this SOA conference. My prayer for you sincerely from the depth of my heart is that with these redefinitions and these reorientations that you have received, that it would have positioned you to become an exceptional leader in the home front, in business as a student as an entrepreneur as a man of god in whatever capacity you have to serve you should know that there is a call and there is a beckon upon your destiny to be the light indeed let's rise as we pray you are the covenant keeping god please hold hands with someone you are the covenant keeping God Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God Yahweh, the covenant keeping God One more time You sing you are, you are the covenant, covenant keeping God You are
that behind everything that works is not just anointing the value of anointing is that these preparations have been made first hallelujah the quality of the vessel that receives the oil is what gives credence to the oil if a poor and ill-prepared vessel receives the oil it will make it look small God has expanded your mind preparing you for tonight there are many of you the grace that is upon you in terms of ministry let me tell you the truth I have seen this many times in my vision that there are still mighty people the ones you know are only the least of the crop of people God is training but for many you have mastered the art of the altar but you may have ignored leadership is why you cannot scale the vision that God has given you to rise to a point of notoriety for the king there are great businesses here serving this city with products that is needed by all transcontinentally but because you lack this acumen of leadership you are not able to rise and scale your business the labor of the fool I make reference to the scripture that Reverend gave to introduce me where yet every one of them with no exception he says because he knew it not how to get to the city when I discovered the call of God upon my life, I cried unto the Lord to show me all the ingredients that make for an excelling ministry. All that I knew was the areas of consecration and the word of God and prayer. But then I would learn, thanks to quality mentorship, that there are many angles and facets. There are tools. Did you know that when you are preparing a meal, if you are preparing, say, fried rice, the major, the active ingredient, there is the rice itself. But do not ignore the seasonings. Do not ignore salt. If you boil rice alone, it is not fried rice. It is rice, tasteless rice. Am I right on that? You serve that one at the table and you would think that just because rice, the major ingredient is there, you cooked well. You didn't. There are many ingredients required for our overall excelling. Your assignment is to pay attention to every one of them, including the supposedly insignificant ones. We emphasize others like prayer and worship and word and character, which is very important. But do not ignore leadership. Do not ignore all of this. They will open the gates of nations to you. They will bring helpers who will help you in the war. Pray for yourself in one minute. Father, now that I have heard these things, may I be happy as I obtain grace to do them. Go ahead and pray. Some of you, perhaps you are hearing some of these things not for the first time, but you have ignored them and you did not place value on them. Here is God giving you another chance to rewrite your story, to redirect your destiny. Is someone praying? Go ahead and pray. Pray passionately as we prepare for the night. We're trusting God for an outpouring in this place tonight. We're trusting God to bring His word again. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh Lord, forgive me. I have believed in all that you were unable to help me. But
blessed our ears for the things that we have heard blessed our eyes for the things that we have seen blessed is our spirit for the things we've contacted blessed is our time and our life for the privilege to be alive for these days father we want to thank you because our lives have changed our understanding is impacted our leadership is transformed we can never be the same again we want to thank you for everything you have breathed into our spirit this morning we shall return back and we shall continue to incubate this until we give birth to destiny in the mighty name of jesus christ will you stretch your hands towards god's servant as we just pray for him this morning and the lord will strengthen him the lord will yet anoint him no man can do these things by himself no man can stand to minister the way it does by, by the strength of a human being. We want to pray that the Holy Spirit will yet come upon him. There will be fresh impartation. There will be freshness of oil. There will be renewal of his strength. There will be release of grace. That the Lord will yet take this voice to the ends of the earth. Continents and nations that don't speak English language. His leg will enter those continents. And this gospel will get to the ends of the earth. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That the Lord will strengthen him. Give him strength. Give him health. Give him all that he needs to be able to deliver and, and be able to fully fulfill the dispensation of the gospel that God has called him into in the mighty name of Jesus. We have prayed. Say loud amen, somebody. Yeah. If you are as blessed as I am this morning, please let's put those hands together as we celebrate God's servant. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle, thank you thank you thank you sir hallelujah once again let's put our hands together for apostle and appreciate him for this kind of leadership class harvard won't give it to you yale won't give it to you definitely oxford will not give it to you this can only come in an atmosphere like this and for that we are grateful to god and we are grateful to his servant hallelujah. if you want to clap go ahead and clap for the last time Now, don't forget that 4 o'clock is miracle service. We are starting earlier today for the miracle service because we realize it needs plenty of time to minister and we don't want the meeting to drag into the night. So that's why we're starting early so we can hand over the microphone to the man of God as early as possible. Amen. I said amen. We're going to close this meeting now. Just in case you came in after we have taken the offering and so on, please, wherever you are, just lift up your offering. We're going to bless them. I can see many hands up. Please just lift up the hands. If you don't have an envelope, you can raise the money like that. Otherwise, can I have the account details? Let's have the account details on the screen for those who want to make the trans wire transfer. Please put the account details on the screen. We have not closed now. We are going to close right now. Please just hold on. We're about to close right now. This message, I'm going to listen to it at least three times, if not five times. And please, if you go to... Okay, those are the account details. The account details. On our church platform, this message will be there. You can go there, download it, and listen all over and over again. www.hotroenogo.org.mp slash mp3. I repeat, www.hotroenogo.org slash mp3. All the messages there for free download. Please go ahead and download it. And I believe the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Let's pray as we bring this meeting to a close um, tonight. Please lift up the offerings again. All those of you who um, have your offerings or any seats you want to soak towards the conference, you want to give towards the conference, please feel free to do so. Father, bless these sacrifices, bless these offerings, bless these seeds as we raise them right now. And I pray that the hand of God will rest upon these ones, and you will cause the blessings of God to rest upon them, good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now the ushers are all over the place. Please raise the offerings again, so that you can reach out to them. Just wave your hands if you are holding anyone. If you're making your transfer, do it directly on the account details as are in the screen amen all right we're going to join hands together as well all right we're going to join hands together as we share the grace and fellowship please hold hands with somebody may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen break the hands turn around to just one person now you're going to prophesy to them and say surely god's goodness and mercies shall follow you 
all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you i will see you by 4 p.m tonight you have a beautiful day in jesus name